Okay, so um, if we're ready, we'll just get going. So, hi, my name's Samantha, and I'm in my third year at the University of Warwick. And today, I'm going to be talking to Sade about um, the the university and also the local authorities' guidance about coronavirus. Um, we're going to ask some questions. It's going to be quite informal, just to gain an understanding of what students are expected to do and how we can get supported during this difficult time. So if the first question that I can ask you is, can you explain what your role is and how this impacts students like me at the university at work? Great. Thank you, Samantha. So um, directors of public health across the UK are responsible for determining the overall vision and objective for public health in any local area or in a defined area of public health, such as health protection. So they are accountable for delivering public health objectives and reporting annually on the outcomes of any future work. So the Director of Public Health for Warwickshire, myself, uh, has overall responsibility for the health and well-being of residents of Warwickshire. This means that I have responsibility for any University of Warwick students that live in Warwickshire. And in the context of COVID, it means that the same approach to ensuring that we reduce viral transmission and spread applies to all, whether staff or students, as long as they live in Warwickshire. So um, this is now more specifically about students. So what advice would you give to students who are following government guidelines but are upset about being blamed? Um, so in the news, we've seen that. But I think um, all the students that I know, we're sticking to the guidance as best as we can. But what would you advise to students who are following the government guidelines? Yeah, so I have a lot of sympathy for students uh, and I understand it, it can be and has been quite difficult for some of them. But as far as I'm concerned, they are Warwickshire residents like anyone else, and I'm keen to keep them safe. We know that household transmission is a significant factor in the spread of COVID, and the majority of students are doing exactly the right thing by reducing the amount of social contact that they have with others, recognising that it is a collective effort, and by following the rules, they are effectively protecting their own future. And we've seen plenty of students behaving so well, being mindful of other people, respect to their communities. So what I'm going to say is please continue in the same way and, and then you will know that the blame is not justified. Um, I've got a question for you, Samantha, if that's OK. I, I heard you were involved in the test and trace and, and COVID testing programmes in the summer. What impact did that have on, on how you felt about the pandemic? Yeah, so great question. So I was involved in track and trace and also on the testing call lines. And I think it opened my eyes to the seriousness of the disease. Um, you can watch it on the news, but until you actually speak to someone who's had coronavirus, and I spoke to some people who were very ill on the phone, um, it made me like take notice of how important those rules are. And I think when you go to a social environment, it's natural to want to meet up with people. But now I'm much more um, regimented on ensuring that we've got those two metres, wearing your mask, things like that. And remembering that these people aren't just statistics on the television, they're actual people. And you can be an everyday sort of superhero, I suppose, by um, keeping to those restrictions. So what I would say is when I was on those calls, I learned how much just even by not going out, you can help protect people. It just takes that one person to spread it. So that's what I would say was my biggest takeaway. That's brilliant. That's really good. Um, so it's a bit different with Warwick University because we're kind of divided between Coventry City Council and Warwickshire County Council. Um, how can students easily understand where and who to get advice from, particularly if they're living off campus? So Coventry and Warwickshire have different directors of public health, but we meet regularly and, and wherever possible ensure that we have consistent messaging. Uh, we now have a three-tier system in place for different alert levels for different local authorities. And thankfully, Coventry, Coventry and Warwickshire are in the same uh, level. So we're both at level one, which is the medium level. What we do is we continue to do our best to make sure that the advice is clear. We've worked together many times in the past to send out joint messaging, joint letters, joint communications to students signed by both myself and the Director of Public Health for Coventry. Um, if, if you're looking for additional information, what I will say is you can find your postcode on the government website and that will tell you what the exact rules are for the area. But I agree that um, it might be difficult and sometimes con confusing, but we continue to do the best we can to make sure that our messaging is consistent to, to all students. Yeah, I think that's really good advice to look up with your postcode. And I've been using the NHS app. And when you put your postcode of where you're living, that will also tell you your local area. 
And um, when you're coming onto campus, we've got our own track and trace system there. As well. So that will also kind of help students, I think. Um, so sort of building on that is the university is running its own track and trace system and the NHS also have one. Um, can you explain to us what's allowed um, if we are told to self-isolate either by the university um, or by NHS and how do we let the other one know? So if the NHS app lets me know to self-isolate, should I also tell sort of vice versa? Absolutely. So the answer is yes. Um, remember that it is a legal requirement to self-isolate if you have a positive COVID test or if you're contacted by the test and trace program. You should self-isolate for 10 days if so, and the people you live with will need to self-isolate for 14 days, even if they don't have any symptoms. It's important to make sure that the university knows because then you can access whatever support is available for students that, that find themselves in this position. Yeah, I think that's really good advice because um, you might get symptoms of coronavirus, but when I was speaking to people on Track and Trace, the whole of your household, particularly if you're in a flat or sharing with other students, which is quite likely, just letting them know and making them aware as well. And that's also going to help prevent spreading further, particularly if you're studying different subjects and you're meeting lots of different people. Yeah. Um, so sort of building on that again is what support can students get if they need to self-isolate? And is that different if you're on campus or um, living off campus? So the university has specific guidance for you if you need to self-isolate, whether you're on campus or living in private accommodation, and that is available on the university website. Uh, there is a specific section called support while self-isolating, where you can find specific guidance about how the university can support you, whether you're on campus or off campus. Yeah, I think that's really important is trying to get some help and advice and um, particularly navigating like to get food and things. But also um, university is about our social life as well. And loads of societies are adapting and putting things online. So I'm part of the Good Food Society and we're running virtual cooking. If you need to learn to cook during this period, that's a great sort of thing to do. So make sure that you stay involved, but continue your self-isolation would kind of be my advice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, uh, we spend a lot of our time giving our advice. So, t so tell me, what's the most useful piece of advice you've been given during the pandemic about how to cope and stay well? Um, yeah, so I think the piece of advice is probably about the masks. Always remember to take your mask. Now when you leave the house, you have to think, have I got my keys, my student ID, my wallet, but also the mask. Um, I started like carrying a spare as well, because I think that's really useful. And remembering to sort of like wash the masks I add it to your laundry, don't forget about them. And I think it is becoming more normalised. So hopefully it will sort of sink in. And on the university campus, you have to wear them anyway. Um, but also knowing that you can get um, a mask and also a thermometer from Senate House, um, which is on campus. I think that's really good because um, getting a thermometer wasn't something that necessarily occurred to me. But if you can get a free one, it's all the better. Um, so that's what I would say. It's just remember that it does exist. And I think the yeah, fact yeah. that you can't physically see coronavirus is quite a difficult thing. Um, so just remembering to keep those sort of rules and sticking to them without obviously seeing the virus itself, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how did it feel to be nominated as a West Midlands hero? So there's an article, I'm sure we're going to be able to link that, and you were nominated for West Midlands Hero Award. So um, how did you find that? <laughs> it felt a bit odd, if, if I'm going to be honest, because um, the response to, so I was um, nominated uh, because of the council's response to, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But the response has been made possible by a, a bunch of great people working with me. So I've got a fantastic team, public health team, the wider council, great engagement with our partners and Warwickshire communities will have, by and large, done the right thing. So it was a real honour and um, I, the, the, the truth is I have felt quite humbled by it. OK, that's great. And um, I think it's good to get recognition because um, a lot of work that you are doing is behind the scenes to keep us safe. So really glad that you got nominated for that. Um, yeah. So my next question is, um, it seems like quite a long time that we've been in lockdown and then coming out and um, I was just wondering, what is one thing that you would tell your sort of pre-pandemic self? Um, maybe something that you've learned about yourself or maybe a TV programme. What would you tell yourself? So the, the way I'm going to answer that is pre-pandemic, uh, I'd literally just come into role as Director of Public Health uh, and I'd been in the post for about three months before the pandemic hit. 
So I come into Warwickshire with such big and exciting plans for the county. I wanted to jump straight into the health inequalities agenda. That's something I'm really passionate about. I still have those plans, but they've been put on hold. Uh, so I suppose, I suppose my answer will be that it's all about timing. The pandemic will end and hopefully I can still do all of those things that I'm really excited and passionate about. Um, so finally, where should students go to find more information? Um, there's a specific website for the Coventry, Warwickshire and Solihull area where you see all of the latest guidance and access all sorts of COVID data and resources. It's the Stay Safe at Warwick pages uh, and um, I would say you, you I'm, I'm urging people to go to that website and have a look at it. The, the information on it is updated regularly. Um, there's also a COVID-19 safety guide on the My Warwick app uh, and, and um, if you can ask your residential life tutors or your personal tutor, they'll be able to help. We also recommend that you follow Warwickshire County Council on, on, on social media, so Facebook accounts, Twitter, Instagram, and you will find all of the latest news and uh, guidance on it. Um, I think I probably have one more question for you, Samantha. Has there been any changes from COVID-19 that you would like to keep once the pandemic is over? Yeah, so I think my answer probably to that would be not to have 9am's. I love that it's all online. You don't need to sort of uh, go to the campus. And I think it's nice that we've been able to um, meet people all over the world and we're all kind of experiencing this um, virus together. And I think the one thing that I would really want to keep is I remember on a Thursday night and we'll go out and clap for the NHS yeah. and put a rainbow in our window. And I think the feeling of community and like looking after each other, um, particularly as we go into the winter and um, we won't be able to do so much outside, really hope that we kind of take that with us and remember to check in with other people. So I just wanted to thank Shadi for her time today. Um, you're really busy at the moment, so we really appreciate that. And like Shadi said, make sure to follow Warwickshire County Council on their social media, but they're also sending out lots of emails um, also in collaboration with Coventry Council. So make sure you're looking out for those emails. And if you have any questions, um, make sure that you get in contact with the correct people and they'll be able to help you out. So thanks again. Thank you, Samantha. It's been lovely to be interviewed by you. Thank you.